Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, January the 30th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, Police Chief Shane Harger talks to InfoWars after he's harassed by the feds and placed on leave. This after signing a pledge to uphold the Constitution. Yet another disturbing indication that the federal government, in addition to law enforcement authorities, view Americans who support the Bill of Rights as domestic terrorists. Then, Super Bowl fans prepare to surrender their civil rights and submit blindly to authority as TSA Viper squads invade New Jersey. Jakari Jackson reports live from MetLife Stadium. All that plus more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, our top story tonight is from Paul Joseph Watson. It's a police chief who's been harassed by feds and placed on leave after signing a pledge to uphold the Constitution. Now, this is all being driven by the TSA. This is where it all originated from. We have an interview with this police chief, Police Chief Shane Harger, as well as with Sheriff Richard Mack. That is going to be at the end of the program. It is a vitally important issue. This is a case of those who openly disobey the Constitution, who are not even officers of the law. They're not sworn officers of the law. And they're coming after those who are and who have sworn to uphold the Constitution and take that oath seriously. So stay tuned at the end of the program. We're going to have an interview with the sheriff, uh, Mac, as well as with the police chief, who has just been dismissed and put on administrative leave. Tonight there will be a meeting, although we don't know the results as of the time of the news as to whether or not he will be fired, but his entire police department has been disbanded at this moment. Now, if you want to know why this is really important, you'd have to look no further than Fullerton, California, because we see there some more aftermath of the death of Kelly Thomas. That's the homeless man who was beaten to death by a gang of cops over an extended period of time. It was captured by video camera. And in this article, we see that cops are laughing about having a license to kill. This is a Fullerton resident who was arrested after protesting the acquittal of officers who were involved in the death of Kelly Thomas. One of the cops leaned over the protesters and with, quote, malice in his voice said, there's a pack of 12 cops waiting to smash your effing faces in. Now, this is consistent with what we were told and we saw in the video of what the cops did to Kelly Thomas when they killed him. They threatened him. He said, do you see my fist? This is the cop speaking to the homeless man who was on the ground. They're getting ready to F you up. Now, just remember, Kelly Thomas, as the article points out, was a mentally disabled homeless man. He was beaten, tasered, suffocated, and pistol whipped as he lay on the street corner being sat on by no less than six police officers. This went on for 25 minutes, and he can be heard as he's dying, pleading for his daddy, saying, Daddy, Daddy, they're killing me. This is where it's headed if we don't stand with the constitutional sheriffs and peace officers. We need to roll this back. These lawless law enforcement officers, quote unquote, they're disobeying the Constitution, they're disobeying the law, and they're becoming a dangerous gang of thugs. And in many cases, like this case here in Fort Worth, we see that we have police officers who are not trained and, of course, are not held accountable for what they do, even though they're not trained. We have no charges filed against a cop who shot a 72-year-old on his own driveway. Now, yesterday, a grand jury in Fort Worth declined to charge a Texas police officer who killed a 72-year-old man on his own driveway after arriving at the wrong address to investigate a burglary alarm. Now, take a look at this picture we have. You can clearly see that there's 409 where he was called, or 404, the, the two addresses that are in question, they're on opposite sides of the street, of course, because even numbered ones are on one side of the street and odd numbered ones are on the other side of the street, as in all cities, as all police officers should know, but even more so, this was stenciled on the curb of both houses, as well as on the mailboxes. And the police have put this out as if the man came at the police officer with a pistol. But his family is saying that he was shot in his own garage. They say that there was a campaign of misinformation. And interestingly enough, one of the neighbors is a former Fort Worth council member. That's Becky Haskin. And she said that the police officer was a victim of his own inexperience. She said he just unloaded his gun in rapid fire. That's what I heard. It woke me up. I thought it was in my backyard, just rapid fire, one rat after the other in quick succession. Seven rounds he emptied into this 72-year-old man, not giving any warning, not backing off, not assessing the situation, not even understanding what address he was at. Now, that may not be something that's worthy of murder, 
but it is certainly manslaughter, and it is certainly something that he should not be on the police force. It remains to be seen whether he's going to be taken off. He will probably, given past experience, will be kept on the police force. And we see that in Connecticut, gun owners are actually revolting and refusing to register their guns and their ammunition clips. A new law that went in at the beginning of the year. Gun owners in Connecticut have revolted against this with only 38,000 out of 2.5 million high-capacity magazines being registered with authorities. Now, this figure of 2.5 million, 2.4 million, comes from a 2011 Office of Legislative Research study that found, quote, there are over 2.4 million large-capacity magazines in Connecticut that originated at the retail level. Now, of course, that doesn't even include those that were not purchased at retail level. And the danger of this is that we all know that registration precludes confiscation. And just as we saw with the previous story, when the police come to your home to look into the fact that you have guns, they may very well be afraid of the fact that you might shoot them. And we've, been, we've seen over and over again that the police are given carte blanche to kill anybody that they feel concerned about, if they're, if they're scared in any way whatsoever, or feel like they're threatened in any way whatsoever, and many of them feel threatened just knowing that you have a gun. This is a very serious issue. This is something that the feel-good liberals have thrust on people, but we understand what's behind this. We know that it is a prelude to confiscation, and it creates a very dangerous flashpoint situation between citizens and an out-of-control police departments. Now, all of this, what we hear from this police officer we're going to be talking to at the end of the program, all of this is not a game. It's not a political game. It's not a, a Simon Says game. When Obama talks about being a dictator, when he talks about using the executive order, we need to take that very seriously. And unfortunately, there's only a handful of congressmen, people in the legislative branch, congressmen and senators who do take this seriously. One of them is Mike Lee, and he confronted Eric Holder today and asked him about what authority he had for these executive orders. And Holder said he couldn't explain the constitutional basis for the executive orders because he hasn't read the legal analysis or at least hasn't seen it in a long time. Now, look at this article before we go to the sound clip. Lee had based his questions on a standard legal test, and this is something that came from a Supreme Court decision where a judge Robert Jackson said the president's authority to issue executive orders is strongest, and he lays out three points. He said, number one, when he's acting with the backing of Congress. In other words, when he's following a law that Congress has put out. It's more dubious, he says, if he issues an order pertaining to a topic on which Congress has not passed a law, and it's weakest when the executive order is, quote, incompatible with a congressional command. And of course, we're seeing that over and over again. That's precisely the point that Obama says he wants to make these executive orders because he doesn't want to listen to Congress or wait on Congress or wait for the laws to be passed as they are prescribed to be passed in the Constitution. Here's that clip. So in which of those three categories uh, would you put the president's decision to delay the enforcement of the employer mandate? Is that category one? Two or three? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I have not seen, I don't remember looking at or having, I don't, haven't seen the analysis in, in, in some time, so I'm not sure where along the spectrum that would come. Um, How about the executive order uh, that he proposed last night uh, with regard to minimum wage? W would that be category one, category two, or category three? Well, again, from without having delved into this to any great degree, that was. But you're the attorney general. I assume he consulted you. Well, it's imperative within our constitutional system that we not allow too much authority to be accumulated in, in one person. And it's one of the reasons why we have a constitution is to protect us against the excessive accumulation of power. Well, as he pointed out, you're the attorney general, but of course we all know that Eric Holder is an attorney general who, if he enforces a law at all, he enforces it very, very selectively. He could care less what the law is and neither could Obama. Now, our task here at InfoWars is not only to inform you about what's going on, but to educate you as the media and the government are trying to misinform you and to keep you in ignorance. Take a look at this report on the price of gold from Calgary Television. Some investors aren't confident that with what gold is backed by, or if it's backed by anything at all, as compared to something like the U.S. dollar. Investors are comfortable that the U.S. dollar is backed by the American government. So no matter what is happening to the American economy, something like the U.S. dollar is backed by the Federal Reserve. That's going to be around a year from now. That's a much more comfortable investment for them. Because uh, some 
people out there in our nation don't have maps and uh, I believe that our ed education like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq everywhere like such as and I believe that they should uh, our education over here in the US should help the US or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries so we will be able to build up our future whatever I mean, it's great that we've got some comic relief with all of the serious news tonight, but it is really disturbing to see somebody that is part of the mainstream media in Canada that is so uninformed about gold and the nature of fiat currencies. She says that investors are not comfortable with what gold is backed by. <laughs> that is the level of Miss South Carolina in that team contest. If it's backed by anything at all, but of course we can all trust the U.S. dollar because it's backed by the U.S. government, and that would be the such as Federal Reserve, <laughs> which is not part of the U.S. government. What do we say? You know what, the, you, if you're watching our broadcast, you know what we're talking about. Now, finally, just before we go to the break, we've got one more story. The EU has secret plans for the police to remotely stop cars. Now, this is something that is very dangerous. This is part of the ongoing, what I would call the war on drivers. This is confidential documents from a committee of senior EU police officers who hold their meetings in secret. And they have laid out a plan entitled Remote Stopping Vehicles as part of law enforcement surveillance and tracking measures. This is a technological solution that they're calling for to be put in all new cars by the end of the decade. And this document was released by, released by an organization called State Watch, a watchdog monitoring police powers, state surveillance, and civil liberties in the EU. They've leaked the document because they're concerned that the technology poses a serious threat to civil liberties. Boy, does it ever. It poses a serious threat to us all. As I said, it's like a war on drivers. We've got the black box, which is going to be used to tax us by the mile. It's going to be used to automatically give us tickets. We see as they're rolling in these self-driving cars that they're also going to be raising insurance rates for people who want to drive themselves. We can see all of this happening. Alex Jones has been talking about how the government is going to remotely be able to stop your car anytime they wish. They've got currency controls, they've got border controls, they're gonna control your travel everywhere. That's what the TSA is about. And it's why we have to rein in this lawless agency that is flaunting their police powers in our face and in the face of our constitutional police. And that's who we're gonna be talking to at the end of the program. But I'm gonna end this with one quote from uh, a conservative MP. He said, the price we pay for surrendering our democratic sovereignty is that we are governed by an unaccountable secret clique. And that's exactly what we're seeing. We've got secret courts in the US with FISA. We don't even know what they're deciding. We're not allowed to see their decisions, but they maintain that their secret court decisions are not only valid, but that they go to the extent of modifying our constitution. Nothing could be farther from the truth. We'll be right back. We've got more reports and we've got an interview with Police Chief Harger as well as a report from Jakari Jackson at the Super Bowl, telling us about how they're rolling out the police state there. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic.